between us and you was crushed. Thank you that at the cross you deposed and discarded principalities and powers and all ordinances that was written against us that stood against us that waylaid us and that pulled us down. You took it out of the way. You nailed it to the cross. Thank you for that old rugged cross. The mystery that you brought about. The Bible says, if the princes, the principalities have known, they will not have crucified the Lord of glory. But Lord, we thank you that the cross has become our jewel. It has become our greatest treasure. And this morning, Father, as we, your remnants, as we move from here, will bear the cross, will carry the crucified life. For it is only the crucified that can preach the crucified. Lord, we ask, O oh God, that this morning, that thing you put in the lives of those who serve you, please place it in our lives now. Cause us to walk in that reality. Cause us to grow in it. Preserve this remnant that despite all the challenges around, they will remain solid, they will remain stable, they will remain focused, and they will remain single-eyed until we see your glory established in the land of the living. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord bless you. <clears throat> By the grace of God, as we come to the end of the exposition, then I will be calling forth all the uh, security people, all those that were either ex-service or are presently in service, and all those that God has charged with the security of the land, we shall be spending a bit of time to pray with them after this morning instruction before we move on. Praise the Lord. I'd like you to take your scriptures and we're now our brother began to deal with some critical characteristic features of remnants. And he has said, they are not offended, neither in God nor in men. Because those who will bear the fire to reset the purpose of God on the face of the earth. They cannot afford to be distracted. They cannot afford to branch here and there. The power that penetrates in them is the power of Christ at work in them. So this morning, I'd like to be looking at these remnants. What is it that singles them out? What singles out? What's our distinguishing mark among men? And I'm going to be reading some few scriptures uh, this morning. I would like to pick, I want you to read 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I would like to read 
verse 17 up to verse 25. I would like us to read that. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? And where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. He pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Verse 25. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is greater than men. May the Lord bring increase to his word as we study together this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to follow me still to Galatians chapter 6 and then Galatians chapter 2. Galatians 6, I want all of you to go to Galatians 6. And I'd like to read from verse 11. I'll read continuously to verse 18. You see how large a letter I have written unto you with my own hand. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. But God forbid... God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. From henceforth, let no man, let no man trouble me, for I bear 
in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. What do you say to that? Yeah. Amen. Now the last passage, Galatians chapter 2. And I'll read verse 20 and 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. But Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself to me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Father, I ask you this morning, please be explicit to us. I ask, Lord, that help us to embrace the way of the cross. What will make us remnant is our commitment to the cross. What makes others to go the broad way and become compromisers is because they hated the cross. They look for something that pampers the flesh. Lord, I ask this morning, please raise men and women here crucified in order to preach the crucified. Lord, I ask that the power that will overcome the world is not oratory, is not money, is not charisma. It is the power of an endless life that emanates from the crucified life. Lord, I pray this morning, O oh God, in this short period, press upon our heart the life that will win this battle. Undertake for us this morning. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. The singular mark of the remnants what is it that distinguishes them? Actually, what makes them the remnant? And I have taken three passages to read. They are all very critical passages. But I intend that by the time I'm concluding with you now, you will understand where the battle is. What exactly is the issue? What is the devil fighting us about? What is it that has brought the church down to this level of weakness? And if we are going to be the remnants, we've got to understand what is the bone of contention. Permit me to say to you that there will be many, many preachers at the end time. There will be heaps and heaps and heaps of preachers and teachers in the end time. There will be all manner, all shades and shapes of preachers and ministries and ministers as the days go by. But I want you to remember that it was so prophesied. He said, in the last days, men 
will love themselves rather than God, isn't it? Let me read that to you so that I can dispense it as you follow me because I'm not intending to spend time on it. I just need to mention so that we can go from here. Second Timothy 4 verse 1 and 2 up to verse 3 perhaps up to verse 4 let me read no comment just to read I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom preach the word be instant in season and out of season. Reproof, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and patience. For the time will come and it has come when they will not do what? Endure sound doctrine. But after their own loss, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. And they shall be turned unto what? Unto fables. So let us note that when we talk about the remnant, actually, what makes them remnant as far as God's word is concerned is what they stand for. What makes them the remnant is the singular mark that marks their lives out. As per majority, as per volume and size, as per largeness and crowd, there will be heaps of teachers. You know, when the Bible said they will heap unto themselves teachers, that gives me a sense of plenty. Am I right? That gives me a sense of so many, many, many who will be saying one thing or the other, saying one thing or the other, saying one thing or the other all the time, and yet they are not the remnants. And that that time has come when those who cannot endure sound doctrine, sound doctrine is an offense to them. Sound doctrine is too rigorous for them. Sound doctrine, they have no space for it. Sound doctrine puts them off. Because something has happened to their ears. What the Bible says has happened to their ears. They have itchy ears. This little finger is always in their ear like this. They are looking for something to hear. Something is itching them, so they need to hear something that suits them. And brothers and sisters, there are going to be hundreds and thousands of such preachers and teachers whose only reason of being in the ministry is to service the itching ears. You are not hearing me at all. They are in the ministry, they are very popular and they will be much more popular only because they are soothsayers who 
is a soothsayer? I have always been defining it. Who is a soothsayer? A soothsayer is any man who says what suits men. Oh, you are not hearing me. Who is a soothsayer? A soothsayer is one who says what suits men. A soothsayer comes and rub Vaseline on a wound and is telling you that this wound will not kill you. You are going gangrene and you are cut out to hell but he still tell you that you are nice. It didn't matter to him how you are living. All he needs is to say something that will make you gyrate and dance and jump up and slap your hand together to applaud him. Such will increase. So let us note that now. Such we multiply. Listen, we they have audience. Talk to me, please. We they have crowd. And so if you are intimidated because you see crowd and multitude of men and women with itching ears who gather only to hear soothsayers and you decide to be intimidated as to give up your remnant position which is the only position that can actually prepare men for heaven then you have missed it I don't know whether you are following so because of that what is it that makes us the remnant is because of the mark we bear is because of the message we have been called to preach is because of our commitment to the crucified permit me to say to you if we change what we have been emphasizing if we change confronting men with the cross, we will no longer be recognized by God as the remnant. He will say, this also has gone away. Are you hearing me at all? He will say, this one also has gone backward. You say this one also, like Demas, he loves this present world. Praise the Lord. So let's quickly note it now. But I want to begin, I should have started from 1 Corinthians, but I intend to end in 1 Corinthians. So I would rather begin from the last passage, Galatians chapter 6. Let's start from there. Then I'll come back, and then I'll come back, and then we will conclude. Now, look at Galatians chapter 6, all of you. There are reasons why we have to do exposition of Scripture so that you know what is critical? What is crucial? What is the singular mark? What does God approve? What are we all about? What is it that the world system must be confronted with 
if there is going to be a genuine transformation, what must all our singers be singing? If their ministry will bring transformation, what should our Bible teachers be teaching? If they will see the glory of God rather than empty noise. What should those of you who are eager to see the glory of God, what should you commit yourself to? I start from Galatians and I'll go back until I can bring the matter to a conclusion at this point. Chapter 6. Are you all there? Now, Paul, after encountering Christ in the way God took him out and recruited him, he had a conflict that only as you study the word of God, you will see what this man fought for. And why was Paul an ever fresh teacher even after he has died? Hallelujah. Why were his letters still so fresh and powerful? Why is it that he spoke and we could not discard what he said? I would like to tell you, it is because of what he committed himself to. Brothers, those of you that are pastors and preachers here, I want to tell you, you can preach anything. You can entertain your congregation. You can make them dance to nothing. But as soon as you drop off, your memory will be wiped off. Because you are of no contribution to eternity. You may achieve temporary popularity. You may appear as if you are prominent. But there will be no trace of your life after you are gone. You may think it is your ministry to service the itchy ears. You may think that you are doing so well because you make the people happy, not holy. Am I communicating with you? There are certain things that you may do that is not a prerequisite for heaven. And if you do not take time, you may have labored in vain. You may have run in vain. But because we are talking to men and women that God is looking onto, looking to use as the remnants that will forestall destruction and bring about genuine transformation, that's why I have to spend this morning laying this before you. Now, Brother Paul said, and this was his final final letter to the Galatians and said, you see how large a letter I have written to you with my own hand. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh. So does it mean that even in his own day there were preachers that want to make what? A fair show in the flesh. 
You are not hearing me at all. They are in the ministry to do what? To make a show. They like fanfare. There's nothing they can do secretly. They hate obscurity. They love publicity to a fault. They want to be in the eye of the camera every time. Not because they have something crucial to say, but just to make what? A fair show. So even in the days of Brother Paul, he said there are many who desiring to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised. Now, please read your Bible in between the lines because I want you to see something there. They make you to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised. Only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. Which meant there were men, preachers, who will deliberately do something so that they can avoid the persecution of the cross. Praise the Lord. Eh? There will be people whose reason of being in what they are doing is to be in the good book of everybody so that the cross of Jesus Christ, they will never suffer for it. So let's note. A crossless preacher is not one of the remnant. Am I communicating with you? Men that say everything else, they bring psychology, they bring human ideas, they bring entertainment, they do everything just to keep the crowd. But they avoid the cross and its effect on the lives of men, they are not part of the remnant because they are working, according to Brother Paul in Philippians, for their own belly. Have you read something like that in, in, in Philippians chapter 3? He said, these are the enemies of the cross. Their God is what? Is their belly. Permit me to say to you, why we are looking for the remnant is because such people will be in the majority. Am I communicating at all? It is because such persons, they will be so loud, they will gain the social place, they will feed the media, they will seem to have all the money to drive their agenda. They will be so prominent as to let it look as if those who are preaching Christ and Him crucified, they are only remnants. Are you hearing me at all? It will look as if they have gained the whole space. If they sounded their trumpet like this, you will see everybody running, 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 running. And it will make it appear 
as if preaching Christ and him crucified has become an offense and a menace. That is what will make us the remnant. Praise the Lord. So Paul said, because they do not want to suffer persecution for the cross of Christ, they even get you to do other things so that they can be in the good books of people. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. So please take note of all the parameters of this kind of people. They want to do what? Make a fair show in the flesh so that they will not participate, they will not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. Number two, they will do everything which they cannot themselves do by their lives so that they may do what? They may glory in your flesh. So, can I quickly put two things together before I go away from there? All those who are in the work of God to seek personal glory, they are not part of the remnant. All those who desire to make a name for themselves at the expense of our master Jesus, they are actually the enemies of the cross. What we mark our lives out, what does God want us to do in this end time? What is the crucial thing that the Holy Spirit must raise men like us up to bring back to the body of Christ. It is the cruciality of the cross. I'll be explaining that as I go ahead quickly. But these men that want to make a fair show, the cross is already an offense to them. These men that want to glory in your flesh, they can do nothing around the cross. They will bypass it. They can preach 52 Sunday a year and there will be no mention about the crucified. They will be promoting glory without death. Are you hearing me? They will continue to to impress up, upon their audience how they can be great, how they are going to make it, how they are going to have a breakthrough, disregarding how Jesus said, unless the corner of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. They will they will excite you with possibilities of resurrection. But they will never remind you that he who has never died can never resurrect. Eh? The angel said, come, this is where he was laid. It is where a man had experienced death. It is at that point he can experience what? Resurrection. What will be the singular mark of these, these remnants? That God is laboring to raise 
Look at what our brother said. But God forbid that I should glory. Except what? Except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom the world is what? Is crucified to me. And I, I unto the world. Two things that are very critical here. These remnants, they are dead to the world. Did you hear me? They are dead to the world. They are dead to sin. They are dead. They are dead. They are only alive unto God. The world has been crucified to them. The world has no attraction for their lives anymore. And they themselves, they have been crucified to the world. Between them and the world stands the cross. Hallelujah. The world cannot get to them again because the cross has crushed them. And they themselves, they can't touch the world anymore because even the world had been crucified unto them. Yesterday, as many of us were trooping out and say yes Lord I say yes to you Lord I say yes to you Lord perhaps there was one thing I should remind you that you said yesterday when you said yes to the Lord do you know what you said Lord I say yes to dying I want to die to the world I want the world to die to me that I may freely without hindrance serve only your purpose. I want to be remembered for nothing apart from that I lived the crucified life and I preached the crucified Lord. Permit me to tell you, everything else you say to people, they will forget. Only those that you bring to Calvary will remain. Please hear me very well. Everything else you say to men, excite them, they may jump, they may run around for you. But the only thing that will survive the test of time and the test of eternity is that which Calvary has accomplished in their lives. Praise the Lord. I will tell you something before I go from that passage because I thought it's very important. Do you know what made people like us to suffer so much for many years? I suffered many years. I suffered in the hand of preachers who particularly thought I was an old, old prophet, old fashioned, somebody that you should not listen to. And what was the mark? What was my offense? What did I do? One day I sat and said, God, what is wrong with me? 
I don't know whether you have ever come to a position where you are sitting and say, why? Why now? What have I done? And the Lord looked at me and said, because of what you are saying, men don't want to hear it. And they told me, even they will gather, they will call me aside. Ragbile, if you stop emphasizing this death, death, death thing, don't you have any other thing to preach? Say something that will make everybody happy. But I kept remembering that God did not ask me to make people happy. He sent me to make men holy. For without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And what will not make you see the Lord is the flesh. And the only instrument that deals with the flesh is the cross. If I stop preaching the cross, I lose my relevance. And people told me, please hear me. They said, as long as you are preaching this, your, your something, you cannot make it. But you don't know why it didn't affect me. Can I tell you? I died to making it. I already died to making it. I did not, I'm not living to make it. There's nothing I want to make. I only want to make heaven. May God help you to understand. There's nothing I'm longing to become. So you cannot say, Bragbile, if you continue to preach this, you will not become something. I don't want to become something. I died to becoming something. If you think I have become something, that is not what I plan to become. Those something you are seeing around me, they are only following. They are not the thing I'm pursuing. What I'm pursuing is him and him crucified. But I want to tell you, I thought you can silence a man that preaches the cross. But I discovered that the more I preach Christ and him crucified, the more I could not be ignored. The more you cannot sleep without giving consideration to what I've said. I had gone somewhere. Oh my God. I went to South Africa. This should be 1997. In a continental meeting, all of African evangelicals. And they asked me to bring an exposition on Galatians. Haba. And as I began, from chapter 1, these are heavy men, high theologians, and all of them from all over Africa. At first, I was looking at the affair. I said, these are all having PhDs in theology, doctor of divinity, da, 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 da. Because when they were introducing themselves, it was intimidating. When they were to introduce me, they say, what do you say about yourself? I say, I'm just brother, brother Gile. They say, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? I say, I'm brother Gile. Now, you will not understand. As I was coming out to preach, 
And I carried my Bible bag in those days. I spread my Bible on the something. They were wondering, what's the meaning of this? And some women, sisters that came from Malawi for that meeting, they look at one another. Say, why did we waste money to travel all the way to South Africa to listen to this kind of man? And they look at one another and said, let's go shopping. Then another one persuaded the other and said, at least we have come. Let's hear his, his foolishness so that we will know at least he said something foolish. It was later on they came confessing to me with tears. When the word of God came, and what was I preaching? I am crucified with Christ. Hmm. They couldn't go again. They wept. They came to the altars. One woman from U.S., very tall, white lady, he walked up to me. Young man, you have scattered and shattered my life. I don't like you. <laughs> but I don't know what to do now. I cannot apologize for the truth. And as she was walking away, I don't like you. You reminded me of all the things that God told me to do that I did not want to do. How could I come all the way from America to come and confront the same thing that I was running away from? I don't like you. I died to people liking me. I'm not looking for you to like me. The only person that must like me is Jesus. If you don't like me, what, what does that mean? What do you have to affect me even if you don't like me? If you don't like me, no problem. If you like me, no problem. Nothing added to my life. I died. I died to that. I died to your comments. So as the woman was going, I was still standing speechless. Then she turned back, shedding tears. He said, but I cannot ignore what you have said. I can't go away from this thing. Would you like to pray for me? By the time I came to the end of that series of exposition, the entire conference have changed their discussion. I realized that it's because people like us kept quiet. That's why foolishness is going everywhere. I discovered that even though we appear like remnants, what we carry supersedes all the noise. If you will not commit yourself to preaching Christ and him crucified, you have no business in what God is about to do. Some people think that if we preach the cross, there will be no healing. They think if we preach the cross, there will be no miracles. They think if we preach Christ and him crucified, there will be no prosperity of life. I want to tell you that's a blackmail. 
the most authentic miracle you will see in your ministry is the one that emanates from his power of resurrection. The most outstanding miracle God will give you as you go on in life is as you lift Christ up. As men see him, the crucified, he will draw all men to himself. Many of those that did me like this and say, you are not going to go anywhere. We will go for conferences. Everybody is sending something else. Sometimes I'm intimidated. I say, God, nobody has said this thing that you are saying as you say. Will I not look odd man out? And I will hear him say, narrow is the way. Few there are that finds it. I wouldn't know why Jesus would just bring me one verse like that. Then I would strengthen myself. I say, So when they would say, Bragwile is coming now to speak the word of God, people were just. Those that have been laughing and yelling before, they said, There's something we have to hear now. I said I went for a meeting, sir. And the man of God, very popular man of God, I highly respected him. Even me, I wanted to hear him. But when he stood up, he just told stories. Just told stories. Nothing. Ah, I said, God. How can thousands, thousands, these are about 5,000 people. How can they gather like this and all you have done is just to do this? And then he did something that was looking wonderful. As he was talking, everybody was jumping. He would say something, something, something. People would stand up and clap for him. Then he removed his cloth. I said, catch it, somebody! And then thousands were falling here. Thousands were falling there. Everybody fell down. <laughs> Everybody. Everybody was slain in our language that time. They were slain in the spirit. So I was left alone. <laughs> I was the only one sitting now. Everybody has been slain. So I was telling myself, I said, God, since all of these people have entered the spirit and you seem to have worked in their lives, is there anything again to say to these who are already in the spirit? The Lord said, who told you? Then I went to the organizer. I said, the way the spirit had moved in this meeting, I think we should cancel my talk. So that these people can just be in the spirit. The organizer say, what do you mean by that? Nothing has happened though. <laughs> so even, even the organizers themselves, they, are, they know that nothing has happened. <laughs> they say, that's how we used to do it. That's how you used to do it. You make everybody fall, but there's nothing there. <laughs> they say, Bragule, get ready. We'll get the people up for you now. Then, then they just said something and everybody sat up as if nothing happened. I said, oh God, how can God come down? How can he knock people down? And they will still stand up in two minutes and they'll be doing as if nothing happened. I said, uh -uh, something must be wrong here. How will God come and knock you down like this? And when he knocked down brother Paul three days, he had not recovered. Abi, had not recovered. How can people recover in two minutes and they're still sitting normal? This thing.
So I gathered courage to preach Christ again. And what was the Christ I want to preach that day? You know that Christ was manifested to take away our sin. And in him, there is no sin. He died to take away sin. If any man says he's in Christ and he's committing sin, he's a liar. Was that my word? Is that not the Bible? I just read. And I just said, look at this. Oh, I have not finished. When Christ and tears rose in that congregation, now the same people that were slain five minutes ago, they are now crying. They are now running. They are now saying, look, God, my life is not correct. The confession they were making out of their mouth was fearful. Very fearful. You won't know. And then the organizer said, Brad Billy, thank you for being obedient to the message God gave you. Even though you look lonely, but this is what we needed. Then they now sat, canceling from, from that afternoon till the following morning, they couldn't go anywhere. People are coming and say, you have not talked to me. My life has, has scattered. If you don't help me, I don't know where to go. I'm, I'm a liar. They were begging counselors. They were opening up. They were talking. They were explaining. One said, I pregnated my uncle's wife. The baby she's carrying is my baby. But how can we say it to my uncle? And yet you told me that whosoever covereth is sin shall not prosper. What will I do, sir? How will I go now and tell madam that the thing between me and her, we have to open up? Oh. I said, and if you die today and you have not opened up, you know what the Bible says, you will not prosper. Agony of repentance. It doesn't come except you preach Christ and him crucified. Even if that is what will make you unpopular, what do you need popularity for? The remnants are people who are dead. They are dead to human opinion. They are dead to human applause. They are dead. They are dead. They only have one mark in their lives. And brothers, I told you those stories just because I wanted to know that all over the world, all over the world, white, black, Asian, one thing that the world is waiting for is the message that takes them back to the cross. If we fail to preach it, we have failed to preach. There's nothing else that you have been ordained or called or anointed to preach if it is not Christ. There's nothing. So Brother Paul said, God forbid that I should glory God forbid 
that I should have any other parameters of describing myself. God forbid that I should have any other credential with which people will recognize or know me or describe me. God forbid that I should glory except in the cross of Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified to me and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus, all of you listen to this. In Christ Jesus, all of you please hear this. Neither circumcision avails anything, nor uncircumcision. Nothing else is important but the new creation. Nothing else avails except the new creation. Ceremonies or no ceremonies, they are not important but the new creation. The only people that heaven is looking for, new creation. The only people that can change the affairs of Nigeria until we produce them, there's no hope. May God give you courage to be one of these remnants. There will be intimidation, but what, what, what for? What again? What again? What again? The man of God said, you will die. He didn't know why I was not worried. How can you threaten a dead man with death? Did you hear what I'm saying? Somebody has died. Eh? And then you came and said, you will die, you will die, you will die. We will kill you. Does he affect him? Why not? He's dead. Me. How can you kill a dead man? I'm asking you, can you kill a dead man? I don't fear you because I'm dead. We will kill your fame. Which fame? Me, I'm dead. There's nothing you have done. Somebody collected our books. And he went and tore it. Say, I told you not to read this book. You know why? He jammed me preaching one time. He had invited me to preach. Mistakenly, mistakenly. You know, sometimes people invite people that they think are popular. Who will draw crowd for them. Abi. So they were inviting Bragbile because ah, Bragbile, ah, Bragbile, ah, Bragbile will be there. So they brought me. And people were there. And they were already excited that the crowd have come. So when I stood up, I first asked him, would you like us to preach the truth here? He said, we are for the truth now. We are for the truth. We are for the I said, are you for the truth? <laughs> So when we do the word of God and the word of God came out in two hours something that is unexpected happened the people started crying they were weeping they rushed but there was a mistake that day what was the mistake he didn't collect his offering before he brought me to preach. This was the problem now. It was a big problem. Because here are people rolling on the ground. Oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm finished, I'm finished, oh I'm finished. And they are rolling on the ground and weeping. And 
Some carry their hand like this and they are going out. They are going out. The man of God said, Ah, but we have not taken offering. And you see, because he does not understand that you don't have to make noise to, to take offering. He doesn't understand that it is not all this uh, beating of drum. But because it's psychology. He said, well, stop it. Everybody rejoice. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We are going to take an offering now. People say rejoice for what? I need God to settle my life. What is all this now? They were just, they, those that are crying are still crying. Those that are rolling on the ground are still rolling on the ground. So the offering that day was a disaster. A very, very bad. He didn't greet me. Can you imagine you invited me to come and he got annoyed with me? He just pretended to be busy. And I was left on my own. When I got to the room where they lodged me, I said, Lord, what, what happened? He said, did I ask you to ask him to come and conclude the meeting? I said, I said what should I have done? But he's the owner of his meeting. So, the next day, it's a four-day meeting. The next day, the meeting had gone on. Crowd has come again. He said, yesterday we made a mistake. <laughs> he could not hide it. He said, we made a mistake yesterday. We allowed Brother Guile to spoil the ground before we take our offering. So today, we are taking our offering. We are doing everything. When we finish, it can come. Then I knew, well, that was my offense yesterday. So when the word of God came again, the Holy Spirit came down again. Now he was no more worried. He has collected his money. I had not yet finished preaching when somebody stood in the congregation and ran out. Men and brethren, you think I'm a correct woman? My life is like this. My life is like this. Before she finished, others were coming, others were coming, others were coming. The meeting couldn't end. My pastor is no more problem because he has collected what he needed. He said, even if they are rolling on ground till 11 p.m., no problem, no problem, no problem. Now, listen carefully. On the third day, by 6 a.m., the man of God knocked on my door. I was wondering. I said, Bragbile, I couldn't sleep throughout yesterday night. You didn't notice that I was also crying. There was a problem I, I, I started having when I was in the Bible school. It is fornication. I have been promoted from one level to another, but that thing has not left me. And yesterday as we were preaching, you turn back, you know, mine of God sat at the back, and I turned back as if I wanted to make my own illustration. He said, and you pointed at me. And you were speaking about the woman I have misbehaved with. I felt like entering the ground. I couldn't sleep, but I this meeting is for me also. Can you help me? How will a pastor be, be corrected if you don't preach Christ and him crucified? By the time we came in the evening of the third day, he led the meeting as a different man. He said, you men, we have been pretending. We have to face reality now. I said, eh? So God can do that kind of thing if we preach Christ and him crucified. 
Ten years after, I met him again. Ten years. He had now been transferred to another place. And they asked me to come and preach. His introduction of rugby league this time was different. He said, ten years ago, I encountered this man. And that's why my life started. That's when I can say I enter into ministry properly. And as I've been transferred to this place, I was asking myself, what is the best gift you can give this congregation? What has changed my life? I can't hide it from you people. That's why I pleaded that Bragulé should come to us. Then he turned to me and said, 10 years ago, God dealt with me with the message. I thought that these people need to know this. Otherwise, they are going nowhere. Brother, preaching the Christ and him crucified may appear as an obscure message. But it is a message that will set men loose and silence the devil and raise men for transformation. Even if only remnants we hold it, then those remnants, they are the one that holds the key for revival. I'm begging you to join them. So Brother Paul said, and I love to conclude where he did his conclusion, as many as walk according to this rule, you know, when I read scripture, I say, those who walk according to this rule, preaching Christ and him crucified is the rule. When you are not doing this, you are an offender. You are offending the cross. You are offending Christ. You are offending the grace of God. It is the rule. When we say something is the rule, that means it's the norm. It's the right thing to do. Anything outside the rule is wrong. So the word of God says, as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. From henceforth, did you see, did you see, did you see a remnant? What is he announcing from henceforth? Let no man, let no man trouble me. For I do what? I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Now, to get to where I need to conclude now. Now come to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Please, all of you, because if we are going to bring this remnant to create effect and impact in this generation, we've got to be very clear-minded what are we set out for? What's our singular mark? All of you, please come with me. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17, verse 18. For Christ sent me not to baptize. When I first read, I said, ah, how can you say that? Didn't Jesus say, go into all the world? And do what? And preach the gospel. Eh? Baptizing them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Teach to observe everything that I've taught you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the close of the age. How can this brother now say, 
He has not sent me to baptize. I thought that Paul was setting a matter that I want you to hear. Not that he did not baptize. He baptized people. But he knew baptism is not his message. Sometimes you leave leprosy and begin to treat eh, what, do, what is that? Lakwa lakwa ringworm. The one that can do nothing. Even if you have ringworm on your head for 10 years, nothing. The worst they can do is to chop your, your hair and deliver you from barbers. <laughs> you don't have to go to barber anymore. Only need to use Vaseline and rub it and it will be shiny. No problem. But when you allow leprosy, leprosy will chop all your fingers, all your toes. If you don't deal with it quickly, it will chop even your nose. How can you leave a very critical problem and you are chasing ordinary fleas? Christ sent me not to baptize, but to do what? But to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, no with sugar coated language, no with high sandy. I stand in symmetry. And you know why? Lest the cross of Christ should be what? Should be made of non effect. When you read it from other versions, it says, so that the cross of Christ will not be robbed of its effectual power. I realize. That you can't preach the cross and not be very clear. You cannot preach the cross and be shrouded with high sounding language. Unless you want to rob the cross of its power. Those who have the message of the cross to preach, they preach simply. Those who are concerned about penetrating the heart of men with the cross, they don't embellish it. Every embellishment of the message of the cross is, is, is a contamination. Every time you try to add human words to preaching Christ and Him crucified, you have polluted the message. You have reduced its power. You have made it less effective. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So this man said, for the preaching of the cross, to them that perish, what is it? Talk to me, what is it? It's foolishness. It looks foolish. It looks as if you don't have anything to say. And since we don't want to appear foolish, we want to appear as a very highly intellectual. So you come to the pulpit instead of speaking direct to the heart of men, you start talking about something, something logic, something, something logic. Something G, something G, something G. What's the meaning of that? Is it that you just want us to know that you just returned from America? Is that why you are doing all of that? When you are doing all the G, 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 half of the church, they have slept.
and then you have not quoted Christ. I hear you quoting uh, something, something from uh, somewhere. And you quote men as if they are important. We preach Christ and him how? Crucified. We don't preach men and we don't preach ourselves. The remnant, only one thing marks them out, the cross of Christ. Only one message is in their mouth, Christ and him crucified. Only one focus they have, only one thing they are looking for, they want to see Christ and him crucified in the people they are preaching to. If they go to secondary school, that's what they are preaching. Sunday knows. Live from when we will sleep on the floor in Ofante here. When we gather children, students from secondary school in the primary school there. He knows only one message. Abby, only one message. Did he walk? As he walked, as he produced results, it never fails. It can't fail. And all the people that have encountered that message, listen, they never forget it. You meet them after 30 years, they are still reminding me what we said. Is because anything else will be forgotten. Not those that you brought to Calvary. I beg you, as I put this matter to you, what makes us remnant is because we choose to stick to the man of Calvary. Look at what this man said, and I want you to follow me. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved. What is it? I didn't hear you. It is the power of God. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. I'll bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Brother, if you are following me the way I read the Bible, where is the wise? If I want to read it in Yoruba now, I'm going to look at you Where are they? Faded out. Where are the entertainers of this time? Where are they? Faded out. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has God not made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. But now, verse 22, 23 is very important for me and verse 24 before I jumped. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. These are the two issues that confront everybody that makes us to downplay the preaching of the cross. The Jews, what are they looking for? Science. And you know sometimes you come to a congregation, they just tell you straight away. And I remember I went somewhere and said, all this long, long, long preaching of uh, the new old man, I don't want. We don't want. We want something. We want something. You know, 
I don't know whether you have ever been confronted where men are intimidating you not to preach. So, just before I would preach, a man stood up and said, well, hallelujah. Uh, before we listen to Bragwile, because we know, let's just do some quick ministrations. Let's do some ministrations. I said, yes. That's ministrations. Says some of you, something's going to happen to you now. Hallelujah. That's ministration. There is a misunderstanding. As if the cross and the preaching of Christ and him crucified does not carry ministration. As if it has no power. And so because you think that the people want signs. So you want to create signs. Without preaching him who produces signs. You want to be doing flamboyant jiri 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 without pointing men to the source of every life-changing transformation. So when they have done all that, they call. I say, yes, but I believe, you know, time has gone. Time has gone. Just find something small to say. <laughs> No problem. I have no problem. Just give me the microphone. It is something small now. But when it is Christ and him crucified, there's nothing small. How did I tell you? This thing, you are intimidated everywhere. I travel all the way from here to UK to Belfast. They asked me to come and preach in Belfast, white people. And as we are arriving, the leader of the place welcomed us and said, Are you Billy Akani? I said, Yes. I know that you Africans, you preach long. But today, I give you the whole service is 25 minutes. And if you preach more than 20 minutes, I'll collect my microphone. I say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we went to the meeting. Everything was gone. Then Said so for 20 minutes, we're asking Billy Akani. <laughs> That's okay, no problem. To bring us a short message for 20 minutes. I've warned him. So, luckily for me, I went with my wife. I asked my wife, what do I do now? Say, let us pray. She joined hands with me. I said, Father, 20 minutes. Father, 20 minutes. <laughs> Give me 20 minutes. 20 minutes message. 20 minutes that they will never forget. 20 minutes, oh God. 20 minutes, oh God. Only 20 minutes. Hallelujah. So when they brought me up, gave me the mic. I was only asking God for 20 minutes. So as I stood, the word of God came. Moses, my servant, is dead. A living dog is better than a dead lion.
20 minutes. The congregation became silent. When it was 15 minutes, I said, Father, I need to draw the hook now. Ah, my God. By the time I finished, I was careful. You don't offend a white man. So I just, 20 minutes, I just said, sir, it's finished. You know the problem? The people are already on the floor, crying for their lives. If I want to stop it, I will pass 20 minutes. You hear me? If I want to say, okay, okay, no, 20 minutes will have gone. So I gave him the mic so that he can gather it if he can gather it. <laughs> Are you understanding? That's how he himself started crying. Doesn't know what to do. They cried and cried. Meanwhile, me, I'm already my own. I've already fulfilled 20 minutes. They couldn't stop. By the time I was leaving, he said, wow, we've never had it like this. I have been here for 20 years in this place. Nothing like this has ever happened to us. I will get back to you. So he went back to mop up whatever. I've gone. Three young men left the place and traced me to where I was lodged. They said, sir, we have been here for three years. Only today we now found the reason why God sent us to this place. Our training has finished now. We are ready to go. I said, huh? I got a letter back here in Boko. Brother Gbile, will you please come again? We have decided to close all lectures. And you have a whole day. Please, Lord. When I got back there, his introduction, he said, all of you, since one year ago that this man came to us, has there been one week since one year that I did not refer to what he said? Nobody has ever preached in all my years that I've ever remembered, not even the title, talk place of what they said, but this one, Shocked, but he has scattered everything. In fact, it redirected all that we have been doing for one year. I said, uh -huh. That's the kind of preacher I want to be. Are you hearing me? But what will make you like that is the message. What is the message? Christ and Him crucified. I will call you this morning to commit yourself. If you are a remnant indeed, the message that changed the whole world is Christ. What made the world to be turned upside down is Christ and Him crucified. If we are ashamed to preach it, then we are ashamed indeed. But we, the Jews, are asking for wisdom. Greeks are seeking after, I mean, Greeks are looking for wisdom, Jews are looking for sign, but we, what do we do? We preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews a stumbling block, unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called, whether Jews or Greek, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. May God help you this moment. Who can do this? Who is ready to do this? That's what will make me to ask you to now read Galatians 2.20. And then I'll ask you to pray with me. And Galatians 2.20, in summary, just said, I am crucified 
with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. I walk up and down. Yet not I. But who? But Christ who lives in me. Who gave himself for me. The life I now live in the flesh. I live it by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ died in vain. Brother, if there's anything that conquered the world, it was Christ and him crucified. If there was anything that changed the vilest offender, it was that they met Christ and him crucified. If there's anything that would change our generation, it will still be Christ and him crucified. And if there's anything that has made our churches porous, that has brought sin and compromise and worldliness to the body of Christ, is the omission of that message. And if God is saying, look for the remnants, who will be saddled with nothing else but Christ and him crucified, Look for the remnants who will be bold to preach Christ and him crucified. Look for the remnants who will confront kings, potentates, who will confront business like you, who will confront men, men of timber and caliber, with Christ and him crucified, then you are ready to bring revival. I don't know what else can do it. I have not seen anything else that did it. As I read throughout the word of God, that was what they preached. When I read through all the revivers, that was what brought it about. Any revival that lasted. When I looked at all the people that have left enduring influence upon their generation, that was what they preached. And if I also, not because I want men to remember me, because I hate your remembrance, I'm not doing anything so that you can say, oh, brother, I believe, brother, I believe. No, I'm dead to that. But yet, if I preach Christ and him crucified and has affected you, you will not forget him. And as long as you did not forget him, are you hearing me? You will remember he who brought him. We don't beg for anything as we carry this man, Christ and him crucified. If we are raising remnants, they must be these who have only one mark bearing in their body, Christ and him crucified. I'm trusting God that out of Calebite Conference, there will be many of you rising to carry only one message, Christ and him crucified. Confronting students with nothing else but Christ and him crucified. Confronting politicians with nothing else but Christ and him crucified. You know, I thought that this kind of message, you should not confront a big man with it. I used to think, that ah, they are too big for it. Until one day, one man, I've told you about it before, 
Say, Bragbele, you are wicked. I say, what have I done? He said, you greeted me. You respected me. But you did not tell me this message. If I had gone to hell, what would you do? But as soon as a young girl came to preach to him, and he repented, he remembered. He said, you must go to Brother Billy now. That thing that man says is what you need. Professor came and sat down. And I was saying, oh God, how did I make a mistake to think a big man does not need a cross? Since then, I've repented. When governors come, one governor was telling his colleagues, said, I don't like going to Boko, I don't like going to that man, uh, Mr. Bilio, because he doesn't, he doesn't fear anybody. He will just tell you anything. So they were begging him. I didn't know that that's what they did. They begged him, they said, just come, just come. So he came. He came. He was sitting there. I didn't know when the Spirit of God came and I started preaching the Word of God and I called him. I said, you see, what are you doing where you are? He looked and said, you see. I told you. When the message finished and I went back to my office, he quickly came. He said, eh, eh, sir. Eh. I said, no. You need to do the right thing. Once he managed to escape that afternoon, he didn't come back. That's all right. It's all right. But wherever he went, he kept it in there. Are you going to Boko? Are you going there? He knows. Why can't people know you for preaching Christ and him crucified? Why do you twist your mouth because a big man has just come? You will commit yourself this morning. I will preach Christ and him crucified. I will preach him. I will add nothing to it. I determine to know nothing among you except Christ and him crucified. Would you like to be distinguished as this remnant whose only reason for living is for Christ? Whose only message to preach is Christ and Him crucified? Whose only mark to be known with is Christ and Him crucified? Would you like us to pray and say, Lord, I put my hand in your hand. I want to follow this way. I want to be bold at it. I want to engage every opportunity. And if we all take that decision here, if all my brothers here take that decision again, and they go aggressively to do nothing but this, you will see the move of God again. You will see God showing forth his power. See Jesus manifesting his glory. If you will do that. If you do away with high sounding nonsense and preach Christ, the substance of our message, you will see. People will say you're a remnant. That's all right. They say you are old fashioned. No problem. They will say you are not making it. I don't intend to make it. I just want to make heaven. How many of you want to make heaven? Huh? If that's what you are looking for, that's what, that's, that's what to look for. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Stand up and join me to pray. Jesus only is a message. Jesus all at him shall be we will lift up Jesus ever, Jesus only. We will say, 
Jesus only, Jesus ever, Jesus all in all we say, save your sanity, fire in glorious Lord. Jesus only, Jesus ever, Jesus all, in all we sing, save your sanctity, fire in baptize us. And call me king one more time, Jesus. Jesus only, Jesus oh, Jesus, Jesus, in all we see, save your sanctity. to pray will you like to pray will you like to express your heart to God and say father mark me out with this mark me out with your life mark me out with your own mark I'm going to be one of these remnant who preach nothing but Christ who sees nothing else but Christ and him crucified who looks for no glory, no glory, no fear show, no ostentation. Who does not want to be exalted? He does not want to be seen. He does not want to be loved. You only want Christ and Christ alone. Lord, Lord, this is what I want. This is the man I want to be. Can you renew your covenant with God this morning? Can you re renew your commitment to preaching Christ and Him crucified? Would you like to take a decision and say, Oh God, let nothing else dominate my mouth. Let me see nothing else. Let me see glory in nothing else. Except in the cross, whereby I've been crucified to the world and the world to me. Lord, Bakaraba Shanda Baba Baba Baba. I call on you this morning. If you are one of the remnants that God is going to use to bring revival, to bring transformation, to bring a turnaround. Christ and Him crucified. My brothers, my sisters, will you make a commitment this morning and say, Father, from this conference, from this conference, from this conference, this is my resolve. This is my life. This is what I want. Anything else. I no longer want. I want all my pastors, all my brothers, all my leaders, all of you that are in ministry. Can you recommit yourself this morning? Can we make a commitment to God and say to be Christ and Him crucified? Your pulpit, can you dedicate it to doing nothing else but pointing men to Christ and Him crucified? And young men, young women, brothers and sisters, can I count on you this morning to say, Lord, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else, nothing less, 
and nothing else. Christ. 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 Only Christ. Christ and him crucified. Can I hear your voice crying to God and say, Father, this is my commitment. This is where I stand today. This is what I'm going out of this conference to do. It is in this Christ that I will find all my expression. It is in this Christ I'm going to see the glory of God in the land of the living. Oh, Baruch Ashadaba. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know several of us were on our knees praying. Anybody who have understood, you know that this is the prayer. This is the thing to do, my brother. This is the way to go. If you are going to be relevant, if your voice will be hard up above, if you will not frustrate the grace of God, this will be the way forward. Thank you. Thank you. If you're on your knees, either by your chair, or you're on the altar, or you decide to stand up with your hand lifted to heaven to renew your covenant, to renew a commitment to preaching nothing but Christ, to announce, you will also make an announcement this morning, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of Christ. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor incircumcision availed anything but the new creation. This will be my life. This will be my message. If you are doing that with me this morning, either you're on your knees or on your feet, can you now lift up the hands and let us recommit ourselves. I need preachers in the Gala land. I need preachers in the Doma land. I need preachers all over Nigeria. I need preachers from Ghana. Preachers from, from Francophone, from Cameroon. From anywhere else, from UK. From Brazil. From US. From Europe. From Asia. The only message that will change this generation is Christ and Him crucified. The devil will not want us to preach this, want us to tell other things. Can I hear people committing themselves this morning? Lord, as your remnant, we will preach Christ and Him crucified. Thank you. Thank you. So let me be sure now that that's your commitment. Can I see your hand lifted above your head? Let me be sure. Let me be sure that it will become your message. It will become your life. It will become your focus. It will be the only, the only thing that your life will be known with. That from this meeting, nothing else will be important to you apart from Christ and Him crucified. This ministry will become great as long as we keep Him at the center. Jesus must be the center of all that we have to do. Thank you. Lord, look at our hands. We have lifted our hands. We, we make our allegiance to you this morning. Lord, I want you to please commit yourself to us. As this answer are lifted up, take us by our word. Lord, Lord, take us by our word. Lord, the only reason why you are calling for remnants is because men 
they have heaped teachers to themselves. They say everything else, and they have omitted the man of Calvary. This morning, Lord, see our hands lifted in this solemn meeting. Take us by our word. That from this meeting, oh God, we will bear in our body the mark of Christ. From this morning, oh God, nothing will be important to us anymore. The world will be crucified to us. And we also crucify to the world. That from this morning, oh God, we will preach Christ. We will preach him crucified. We will preach the power of his resurrection. We will confront men with his claim. His authority will become our backup. From this morning, oh God, I want to beg you, let there be an explosion explosion of your power an explosion of your power Lord you said if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men to myself this morning oh God draw men to yourself draw men to yourself draw men irresistibly to yourself every chain that binds men Break it in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that has tied men down by the anointing and by the power of your resurrection, cut it short in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, 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 visit your church. Visit our land. As Christ is preached, Confirm the word of your people yeah. with signs and wonders following yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Even this morning, oh God, let the power of res resurrection be released. Yeah. The power that raised you from the dead, let it be released here. Yeah. Let it be released over those that are sick. Yeah. Let it be released over those that are oppressed. Let it be released over those that are depressed. Let resurrection take place in the name of Jesus. Those who men have condemned, those that have been tied down, those whose principalities and powers have kept shut, we release them today in the name of Jesus. When you rose, chains were broken. Grace were opened. Prison doors were opened. This morning, Father, do it again. Do it again. And as these people go from here, preaching Christ and Him crucified, show forth your power. Show forth your glory. Show forth your anointing. Show forth your Lordship. In the name of Jesus. By virtue of this meeting, every pulpit in this land, we proclaim Christ. In every platform, Christ and Him crucified will be the message. In every school, in every office, in every opportunity, Christ shall be preached. When Philip left, left Jerusalem, and went to Samaria. The Bible said, and he preached Christ. When he joined the man in that chariot, the man was reading Isaiah and beginning at that scripture, he preached Jesus. That was the miracle. That was the secret. That was what changed their lives. Father, we commit ourselves from this meeting. To preach nothing but Christ. To say nothing but Christ. To make a display of nothing but Christ. And him crucified. Father, I have a burden to speak to you this morning. About those nations abroad. Those nations of Europe. 
Those nations so good in Asia. Those nations so good in Southern America. Those nations, Brazil, Argentina, all of the places. Father, let the message of Christ prevail again in the name of Jesus. I plead with you this morning. It's only this message that we turn those land around. Cause this message to go everywhere. Raise remnants who will carry this everywhere. Father, we send for these men and women with nothing but this message. Jesus is the trumpet you are going to blow. And as you go, God will confirm his word. Thank you this morning for hearing us. And for this work, oh God, this work, God's care mission, Christ, him crucified, has been the center. Nothing will shift it. No strange emphasis will come here. Amen. Nothing else will take your place in our midst. Amen. Lord, I pray again for your servant Sunday and his wife and all the people that work with him that this, this day again, this voice will not be silenced. They will, they will go from place to place. Amen. They will cause Christ and him crucified to be known among men. Amen. And so disciples will be raised from different tribes and tongues all over the nations in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And there are several of your servants that have stood here who have been in ministry and they are responding again. They are saying, oh God, why am I ashamed? Why am I trying to change? And they have renewed their covenant this morning. I ask you, Father, Remember them. Yeah. I ask that they themselves, they'll come back with testimonies. Yeah. They say, once I took that commitment with Christ, our ministry has changed. Something has happened. Lord, you will bless them. You will encourage them. You will, you will push them forward. We will, we will celebrate your glory in their lives. And there are young people here who are saying, if this is what to do, I throw my life into it. Accept them now. Amen. Don't let them run around in the bush. Amen. Set them on course. Amen. Put this fire on their lips. Amen. As they go from here, oh God, they will penetrate. Amen. They will break through hurdles and boundaries. Amen. Christ in them, the hope of glory, will be made manifest everywhere they go. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you for doing what no man can do. Thank you for the expectation of your divine visitation. Will you wave your hand and say, we confront Nigeria with Christ and him crucified. We, cru we, we confront the Fulanis. We confront the Kanuris. We confront every tribe in Nigeria with the man of Calvary. Lord, you will go forward with us. We will see Nigeria brought back to shape in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen.